Brought to you by wikivd.com House of Plantagenet The House of Plantagenet was a royal house which originated from the lands of Anjou in France. The name Plantagenet is used by modern historians to identify four distinct royal houses the Andevans who were also Counts of Anjou. The main body of the Plantagenets following the loss of Anjou and the houses of Lancaster and York. The Plantagenets' two cadet branches. The family held the English throne from 1154, with the accession of Henry II until 1485 when Richard III died. Under the Plantagenets, England was transformed although this was only partly intentional. The Plantagenet kings were often forced to negotiate compromises such as Magna Carta. These constrained royal power in return for financial and military support. The king was no longer just the most powerful man in the nation, holding the prerogative of judgment, feudal tribute and warfare. He now had defined duties to the realm underpinned by a sophisticated justice system. A distinct national identity was shaped by conflict with the French, Scots, Welsh and Irish, and the establishment of English as the primary language. In the 15th century, the Plantagenets were defeated in the Hundred Years' War and beset with social, political and economic problems. Popular revolts were commonplace triggered by the denial of numerous freedoms. English nobles raised private armies engaged in private feuds, and openly defied Henry VI. The rivalry between the House of Plantagenet's two cadet branches of York and Lancaster brought about the Wars of the Roses a decades-long fight for the English succession, culminating in the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485 when the reign of the Plantagenet's and the English Middle Ages both met their end with the death of King Richard III. Henry VII, of Lancastrian descent, became King of England. Two years later he married Elizabeth of York, thus ending the Wars of the Roses and giving rise to the Tudor dynasty. The Tudors worked to centralize English royal power which allowed them to avoid some of the problems that had plagued the last Plantagenet rulers. The resulting stability allowed for the English Renaissance and the advent of early modern Britain. Plantagenet Richard of York, 3rd Duke of York, adopted Plantagenet as his family name in the 15th century. Plantagenist had been a 12th century nickname for his ancestor Geoffrey Count of Anjou and Duke of Normandy. One of many popular theories suggests the common broom, Plantagenista, in medieval Latin as the source of the nickname. It is uncertain why Richard chose this specific name although, during the Wars of the Roses it emphasized Richard's status as Geoffrey's patrilineal descendant. The retrospective usage of the name for all of Geoffrey's male descendants was popular during the subsequent Tudor dynasty perhaps encouraged by the further legitimacy it gave to Richard's great-grandson Henry VIII. It was only in the late 17th century that it passed into common usage among historians. Angevins The three Angevin kings were Henry II, Richard I and John. Angevin can also refer to the period of history in which they reigned. Many historians identify the Angevins as a distinct English royal house. Angevin is also used in reference to any sovereign or government derived from Anjou. As a noun it refers to any native of Anjou or an Angevin ruler and specifically to other counts and dukes of Anjou, including the ancestors of the three kings that formed the English royal house, their cousins who held the crown of Jerusalem, and two unrelated members of the French royal family who were later granted the titles and formed different dynasties such as the Capuchin House of Anjou and the Valois House of Anjou. Consequently there is disagreement between those who consider Henry III to be the first Plantagenet monarch and those who do not distinguish between Angevins and Plantagenets 
and therefore consider the first Plantagenet to be Henry II. The term, Angevin Empire was coined by Kate Norgate in 1887. There was no known contemporary collective name for all of the territories under the rule of the Angevin kings of England. This led to circumlocutions such as our kingdom and everything subject to our rule whatever it may be or the whole of the kingdom which had belonged to his father. The empire portion of Angevin Empire has been controversial especially as these territories were not subject to any unified laws or systems of governance and each retained its own laws, traditions, and feudal relationships. In 1986 a convention of historians concluded that there had not been an Angevin state, and therefore no Angevin empire but that the term Aspes Plantagenet was acceptable. Nonetheless, historians have continued to use Angevin empire. Origin the later counts of Anjou including the Plantagenets descended from Geoffrey II, Count of Gatinay and his wife Ermengarde of Anjou. In 1060 the couple inherited the title via cognatic kinship from an Angevin family that was descended from a noble named Angelga whose recorded history dates from 870. During the 10th and 11th centuries power struggles occurred between rulers in northern and western France including those of Anjou, Normandy, Brittany, Poitou, Blois, Maine, and the kings of France. In the early 12th century Geoffrey of Anjou married Empress Matilda. King Henry is only surviving legitimate child and heir to the English throne. As a result of this marriage Geoffrey's son Henry II inherited the English throne as well as Norman and Angevin titles thus mark in the beginning of the Angevin and Plantagenet dynasties. The marriage was the third attempt of Geoffrey's father Falk v. Count of Anjou to build a political alliance with Normandy. He first espoused his daughter Alice to William Adeline Henry as heir. After William drowned in the wreck of the white ship Falk married another of his daughters Sibylla to William Cleto son of Henry his older brother Robert Curthos. Henry I had the marriage annulled to avoid strengthening William's rival claim to Normandy. Finally Falk achieved his goal through the marriage of Geoffrey and Matilda. Falk then passed his titles to Geoffrey and became King of Jerusalem. Arrival in England when Henry II was born in 1133 his grandfather Henry I was reportedly delighted, saying that the boy was the heir to the kingdom. The birth reduced the risk that the king's realm would pass to his son-in-law's family, which might have occurred if the marriage of Matilda and Geoffrey had proved childless. The birth of a second son also named Geoffrey increased the likelihood that in accordance with French custom Henry would receive the English maternal inheritance, and Geoffrey the Angevin paternal inheritance. This would separate the realms of England and Anjou. In order to secure an orderly succession Geoffrey and Matilda sought more power from Henry I but quarrelled with him after the king refused to give them power that might be used against him. When he died in December 1135, the couple were in Anjou allowing Matilda's cousin Stephen to seize the crown of England. Stephen's contested accession initiated the widespread civil unrest later called the Anarchy. Count Geoffrey had little interest in England. Instead he commenced a ten-year war for the Duchy of Normandy but it became clear that to bring this conflict to a successful conclusion Stephen would need to be challenged in England so in 1139 Matilda and her half-brother Robert invaded England. From the age of nine Henry was repeatedly sent to England to be the male figurehead of the campaigns, since it became apparent that he would become king if England was conquered. In 1141 Stephen was captured at the Battle of Lincoln and later exchanged for Robert, who had also been captured. Geoffrey continued the conquest of Normandy, and in 1150 transferred the duchy 
to Henry while retaining the primary role in the Duchy's government. Three events allowed Angevins's successful termination of the conflict. Angevins' zenith of Henry's siblings William and Geoffrey died unmarried and childless, but the tempestuous marriage of Henry Henry and Eleanor, who already had two daughters through her first marriage to King Louis, produced eight children in 13 years. Henry also had illegitimate children, with several mistresses, possibly as many as 12. These children included Geoffrey William Peter, and four children who died young by Alice, the daughter of Louis VII, while she was betrothed to his son Richard. William's many competencies and importance as a royal bastard led to a long and illustrious career. Henry reasserted and extended previous suzerainties to secure possession of his inherited realm. In 1162 he attempted to re-establish what he saw as his authority over the English Church by appointing his friend Thomas Becket as Archbishop of Canterbury upon the death of the incumbent, Archbishop Theobald. Becket's defiance as Archbishop alienated the King and his councillors. Henry and Becket had repeated disputes over issues such as church tenures, the marriage of Henry's brother, and taxation. Henry reacted by getting Becket and other English bishops to recognize 16 ancient customs in writing for the first time in the constitutions of Clarendon governing relations between the king, his courts and the church. When Becket tried to leave the country without permission Henry tried to ruin him by filing legal cases relating to Becket's previous tenure as chancellor. Becket fled and remained in exile for five years. Relations later improved and Becket returned but they declined again when Henry's son was crowned as co-regent by the Archbishop of York, which Becket perceived as a challenge to his authority. Becket later excommunicated those who had offended him. When he received this news Henry said, What miserable drones and traitors have I nurtured, and promoted in my household who let the Lord be treated with such shameful contempt by a low-born clerk. Four of Henry's knights killed Becket in Canterbury Cathedral after Becket resisted a failed arrest attempt. Henry was widely considered complicit in Becket's death throughout Christian Europe. This made Henry a pariah. In penance he walked barefoot into Canterbury Cathedral, where he was severely whipped by monks. From 1155 Henry claimed that Pope Adrian IV had given him authorization to reform the Irish Church by assuming control of Ireland, but Professor Anne Duggan's research indicates that the Lord Abilator is a falsification of an existing letter and that was not in fact Adrian's intention. It originally allowed Henry's brother William some territory. Henry did not personally act on this until 1171 by which time William was already dead. He invaded Ireland to assert his authority over knights who had accrued autonomous power after they recruited soldiers in England and Wales, and colonized Ireland with his permission. Henry later gave Ireland to his youngest son John. In 1172 Henry gave John the castles of Sheen on Loudoun and Meyerbow as a wedding gift. This angered Henry's 18-year-old son Henry the young king who believed these were his a rebellion by Henri II's wife and three eldest sons ensued. Louis VII of France supported the rebellion. William the Lion King of the Scots and others joined the revolt. After 18 months Henry subdued the rebels. In Le Mans in 1182, Henry II gathered his children to plan a partable inheritance, his eldest surviving son Henry would inherit England, Normandy and Anjou. Richard would inherit the Duchy of Aquitaine. Geoffrey would inherit Brittany, and John would inherit Ireland. This resulted in further conflict. The younger Henry rebelled again but died of dysentery. Geoffrey died in 1186 after an accident in a tournament. In 1189 Richard, 
and Philip II of France reasserted their various claims exploiting the aging Henry's failing health. Henry was forced to accept humiliating peace terms including naming Richard his sole heir. The old king died two days later defeated and miserable. French and English contemporary moralists viewed this fate as retribution for the murder of Becket. Even his favorite legitimate son John had rebelled although the constantly loyal illegitimate son Geoffrey remained with Henry until the end. Following Richard's coronation he quickly put the kingdom's affairs in order and departed on a crusade for the Middle East. Opinion of Richard has fluctuated. Although he was respected for his military leadership and courtly manners he had rejected and humiliated the sister of the King of France deposed the King of Cyprus and later sold the island he made enemies on the Third Crusade such as Leopold V Duke of Austria by showing disrespect to his banners as well as refusing to share the spoils of war and was rumored to have arranged the assassination of Conrad of Montferrat. His ruthlessness was demonstrated by his massacre of 2,600 prisoners in Acre. He obtained victories during the Third Crusade but failed to capture Jerusalem. According to Stephen Runciman, Richard was a bad son, a bad husband and a bad king. Jonathan Riley Smith described him as vain, devious and self-centered. In an alternate view John Gillingham points out that for centuries Richard was considered a model king. Returning from the crusade, with a small band of followers Richard was captured by Leopold and was passed to Emperor Henry VI. Henry held Richard captive for 18 months for a ransom valued at 100,000 marks. In Richard's absence Philip II overran large portions of Normandy, and John acquired control of Richard's English lands. After returning to England, Richard forgave John and re-established his authority in England. He left again in 1194, and battled Philip for five years attempting to regain the land seized during his captivity. When close to complete victory, he was injured by an arrow during a siege and died ten days later. Decline and the loss of Anjou Richard's failure to provide an heir caused a succession crisis, and conflict between supporters of the claim of his nephew Arthur and John. Guillaume des Roches led the magnates of Anjou, Maine and Touraine declaring for Arthur. Once again Philip II of France attempted to disturb the Plantagenet territories on the European mainland, by supporting his vassal Arthur's claim to the English crown. John won a significant victory while preventing Arthur's forces from capturing his mother, seizing the entire rebel leadership at the Battle of Mirebeau and his sister Eleanor, fair maid of Brittany. Foolishly John disregarded his allies' opinions on the fate of the prisoners, many of them their neighbors and kinsmen. Instead he kept his prisoners so vilely and in such evil distress that it seemed shameful and ugly to all those who were with him, and who saw this cruelty, according to the L'Histoire de Guillaume le Maréchal. As a result of John's behavior the powerful Thouars Lusignan and A. Roche's families rebelled, and John lost control of Anjou, Maine, Touraine and northern Poitou. His son, King Henry III, maintained the claim to the Angevin territories until December 1259, when he formally surrendered them and in return was granted Gascony as Duke of Aquitaine, and a vassal of the King of France. John's reputation was further damaged by the rumor, described in the Margam Annals that while drunk he himself had murdered Arthur, and if not true it is almost certain in John ordered the killing. There are two contrasting schools of thought explaining the sudden collapse of John's position. Sir James Holt suggests this was the inevitable result of superior French resources. John Gillingham identifies diplomatic and military mismanagement, and points out that Richard managed to hold the Angevin territory with comparable finances. Nick Barrett has calculated that Angevin resources available for use in the war were 22% less than those of Philip putting the Angevins 
at a disadvantage. By 1214 John had re-established his authority in England, and planned what Gillingham has called a grand strategy to recapture Normandy and Anjou. The plan was that John would draw the French from Paris while another army, under his nephew Otto IV the Holy Roman Emperor and his half-brother William attacked from the north. He also brought his niece Eleanor of Brittany aiming to establish her as Duchess of Brittany. The plan failed when John's allies were defeated at the Battle of Bouvines. Otto retreated and was soon overthrown. William was captured by the French and John agreed to a five-year truce. John's defeat weakened his authority in England and his barons forced him to agree to the Magna Carta which limited royal power. Both sides failed to abide by the terms of the Magna Carta leading to the First Barons' War, in which rebellious barons invited Prince Louis the husband of Blanche Henry II's granddaughter to invade England. Lewis did so but in October 12, 16 before the conflict was conclusively ended. John died. The official website of the British monarchy presents John's death as the end of the Angevin dynasty and the beginning of the Plantagenet dynasty, baronial conflict and the establishment of Parliament. All subsequent English monarchs were descendants of the Angevin line via John who had five legitimate children with Isabella. John also had illegitimate children with several mistresses. These children probably included nine sons called Richard Oliver Henry, Osbert Gifford Geoffrey John Fitz John Accorsio de Ayudes Fitzroy Evo Henry, Richard the Constable of Wallingford Castle and three daughters called Joan, Matilda the Abbess of Barking and Isabella La Blanche. Joan was the best known of these since she married Prince Llewellyn the Great of Wales. William Marshall, 1st Earl of Pembroke, was appointed regent for the nine-year-old King Henry on King John's death. Thereafter support for Lewis declined and he renounced his claims in the Treaty of Lambeth after Marshall's victories. At the Battles of Lincoln and Sandwich in 1217, the Marshall regime issued an amended Magna Carta as a basis for future government. Despite the Treaty of Lambeth hostilities continued and Henry was forced to compromise with the newly crowned Louis VIII of France and Henry's stepfather Hugh X of Lusignan. They both overran much of Henry's remaining continental lands, further eroding the Angevins' power on the continent. In his political struggles, Henry perceived many similarities between himself and England's patron St. Edward the Confessor. Consequently he named his first son Edward and built the existing magnificent shrine for the Confessor. In early 1225 the Great Council approved a tax of £40,000 to dispatch an army, which quickly retook Gascony, during an assembly feudal prerogatives of the king were challenged by the barons, bishops and magnates, who demanded that the king reissue the Magna Carta and the Charter of the Forest in exchange for support. Henry declared that the charters were issued of his own spontaneous and free will, and confirmed them with the royal seal giving the new Great Charter and the Charter of the Forest of 1225 much more authority than any previous versions. Henry III had nine children. Henry was bankrupted by his military expenditure and general extravagance. The Pope offered Henry's brother Richard the Kingdom of Sicily, but the military cost of displacing the incumbent Emperor Frederick was prohibitive. Matthew Paris wrote that Richard stated, You might as well say, I make you a present of the moon, step up to the sky and take it down. Instead, Henry purchased the kingdom for his son Edmund which angered many powerful barons. The barons led by Henry's brother-in-law Simon de Montfort forced him to agree to the provisions of Oxford, under which his debts were paid in exchange for substantial reforms. In France, with the Treaty of Paris Henry formally surrendered the territory of his Angevin ancestors to Louis IX of France receiving in return the title Duke of Aquitaine.
and the territory of Gascony as a vassal of the French king. Disagreements between the barons and the king intensified. The barons under Simon de Montfort, sixth Earl of Leicester, captured most of southeast England in the Second Barons' War. At the Battle of Lewis in 1264, Henry and Prince Edward were defeated and taken prisoner. De Montfort assembled the Great Parliament, recognized as the first parliament because it was the first time the cities and boroughs had sent representatives. Edward escaped, raised an army and defeated, and killed de Montfort at the Battle of Evesham in 1265. Savage retribution was inflicted upon the rebels and authority restored to Henry. With the realm now peaceful Edward left England to join Louis IX on the Ninth Crusade. He was one of the last crusaders. Louis died before Edward's arrival but Edward decided to continue. The result was disappointing. Edward's small force only enabled him to capture Acre and launch a handful of raids. After surviving an assassination attempt Edward left for Sicily later in the year never to participate in a crusade again. When Henry III died, Edward acceded to the throne. The barons swore allegiance to him even though he did not return for two years. Constitutional change and the reform of feudalism Edward married Eleanor of Castile, daughter of King Ferdinand of Castile a great-grandson of Henry II through his second daughter Eleanor in 1254. Edward and Eleanor had 16 children, five daughters survived to adulthood, but only one son survived Edward, following Eleanor's death in 1290. Edward married Margaret of France, daughter of Philip III of France in 1299. Edward and Margaret had two sons who both lived to adulthood, and a daughter who died as a child. Evidence for Edward's involvement in legal reform is hard to find, but his reign saw a major program of legal change. Much of the drive and determination is likely to have come from the king, and his experience of the baronial reform movement of the late 1250s and early 1260s. With the Statutes of Mortmain Edward imposed his authority over the church. The statutes prohibited land donation to the church asserted the rights of the crown. At the expense of traditional feudal privileges promoted the uniform administration of justice, raised income and codified the legal system. His military campaigns left him in heavy debt and, when Philip IV of France confiscated the Duchy of Gascony in 1294 Edward needed funds to wage war in France. When Edward summoned a precedent-setting assembly in order to raise more taxes for military finance he included lesser landowners and merchants. The resulting parliament included barons, clergy, knights and burgesses for the first time. Expansion in Britain On his accession Edward I sought to organise his realm enforcing his claims to primacy in the British Isles. Llewellyn Knapp Gruffard claimed to rule North Wales, entirely separate from England but Edward viewed him to be a rebel and disturber of the peace. Edward's determination, military experience and skillful naval manoeuvres ended what was to him rebellion. The invasion was executed by one of the largest armies ever assembled by an English king comprising Anglo-Norman cavalry and Welsh archers and laying the foundation for future victories in France. Llewellyn was driven into the mountains later dying in battle. The Statute of Rhythlan established England's authority over Wales and Edward's son was proclaimed the first English Prince of Wales upon his birth. Edward spent vast sums on his two Welsh campaigns, with a large portion of it spent on a network of castles. Edward asserted that the King of Scotland owed him feudal allegiance and intended to unite the two nations by marrying his son Edward to Margaret, the sole heir of King Alexander III. When Margaret died in 1290 competition, for the Scottish crown ensued.
by invitation of Scottish magnate said with the first resolved the dispute, ruling in favour of John Balliol who duly swore loyalty to him and became king. Edward insisted that he was Scotland's sovereign and possessed the right to hear appeals against Balliol's judgments undermining Balliol's authority. Balliol allied with France in 1295. Edward invaded Scotland the following year deposing and exiling Balliol. Edward was less successful in Gascony which was overrun by the French. With his resources depleting Edward was forced to reconfirm the charters including Magna Carta to obtain the necessary funds. In 1303 the French king restored Gascony to Edward by signing the Treaty of Paris. Meanwhile, William Wallace rose in Balliol's name, and recovered most of Scotland. Wallace was defeated at the Battle of Falkirk, after which Robert the Bruce rebelled and was crowned King of Scotland. Edward died while travelling to Scotland, for another campaign. King Edward II's coronation oath on his succession in 1307 was the first to reflect the king's responsibility to maintain the laws that the community shall have chosen. He was not unpopular initially but faced three challenges, discontent over the financing of wars, his household spending, and the role of his favourite Piers Gaveston. When Parliament decided that Gaveston should be exiled the king was left with no choice but to comply, Edward engineered Gaveston's return but was forced to agree to the appointment of ordainers led by his cousin Thomas, second Earl of Lancaster, to reform the royal household with Piers Gaveston exiled again. When Gaveston returned again to England he was abducted and executed after a mock trial. The ramifications of this drove Thomas and his adherents from power. Edward's humiliating defeat by Bruce at the Battle of Bannockburn, confirming Bruce's position as an independent King of Scots leading to Lancaster being appointed head of the King's Council. Edward finally repealed the ordinances after defeating and executing Lancaster at the Battle of Borough Bridge in 1322. The French monarchy asserted its rights to encroach on Edward's legal rights in Gascony. Resistance to one judgment in St. Sardos resulted in Charles IV declaring the duchy forfeit. Charles' sister Queen Isabella was sent to negotiate and agreed a treaty that required Edward to pay homage in France to Charles. Edward resigned Aquitaine and Pontu to his son Edward, who travelled to France to give homage in his stead, with the English heir in her power. Isabella refused to return to England unless Edward II dismissed his favourites, and she became the mistress of Roger Mortimer. The couple invaded England and with Henry, third Earl of Lancaster captured the king. Edward II abdicated on condition that his son would inherit the throne rather than Mortimer. Although there is no historical record of the cause of death he is popularly believed to have been murdered at Berkeley Castle by having a red-hot poker thrust into his bowels. A coup by Edward III ended four years of control by Isabella and Mortimer. Mortimer was executed. Though removed from power Isabella was treated well and lived in luxury for the next 27 years. Conflict with the House of Valois in 1328 Charles IV of France died without a male heir. Queen Isabella made a claim to throne of France on behalf of her son Edward on the grounds that he was a matrilineal grandson of Philip IV of France. However, the precedents set by Philip versus succession over his niece Joan II of Navarre and Charles IV's succession over his nieces meant that the senior grandson of Philip III in the male line Philip of Valois became king. Not yet in power Edward paid homage to Philip as Duke of Aquitaine. In 1337 Philip confiscated Aquitaine and Pontieu from Edward alleging he was harboring Philip's fugitive cousin and enemy Robert of Artois. In response Edward proclaimed himself King of France to encourage the Flemish to rise in open rebellion against the French king. 
The conflict, later known as the Hundred Years' War included a significant English naval victory at the Battle of Slurries and the victory on land at Cressy leaving Edward free to capture the important port of Calais. A subsequent victory against Scotland at the Battle of Neville's Cross resulted in the capture of David II and reduced the threat from Scotland. The Black Death brought a halt to Edward's campaigns by killing perhaps a third of his subjects. The only Plantagenet known to have died from the Black Death was Edward III's daughter Joan in Bordeaux. Edward, the Black Prince, resumed the war with destructive chevauches starting from Bordeaux. His army was caught by a much larger French force at Poitiers. But the ensuing battle was a decisive English victory resulting in the capture of John II of France. John agreed a treaty promising the French would pay a four million ecus ransom. The subsequent Treaty of Brittany was demonstrably popular in England, where it was both ratified in Parliament and celebrated with great ceremony. To reach agreement, clauses were removed that would have had Edward renounce his claim to the French crown in return for territory in Aquitaine and the town of Calais. These were entered in another agreement to be effected only after the transfer of territory by November 1361 but both sides prevaricated over their commitments for the following nine years. Hostages from the Valois family were held in London while John returned to France to raise his ransom. Edward had restored the lands of the former Angevin Empire holding Normandy, Brittany and Jumain, and the coastline from Flanders to Spain. When the hostages escaped back to France, John was horrified that his word had been broken and returned to England where he eventually died. Fighting in the Hundred Years' War spilled from the French and Plantagenet lands into surrounding realms, including the dynastic conflict in Castile between Peter of Castile and Henry II of Castile. The Black Prince allied himself with Peter defeating Henry at the Battle of Nahera. Edward, and Peter fell out when Peter was unable to reimburse Edward's military expenses leaving him bankrupt. The Plantagenets continued to interfere and John of Gaunt, first Duke of Lancaster the Black Prince's brother, married Peter's daughter Constance claiming the crown of Castile in her name. He invaded, with an army of 5,000 men. Fighting was inconclusive before Gaunt agreed a treaty with King Juan of Castile. Terms of the treaty included the marriage of John of Gaunt's daughter Catherine to Juan's son, Enrique. Charles V of France maintained the terms of the Treaty of Brittany, but encouraged others in Aquitaine to challenge the authority of the Plantagenets in Aquitaine. The prince who had suffered a debilitating illness for nearly a decade which often restricted his movement to being carried in a litter returned to England where he soon died. John of Gaunt assumed leadership in France with limited success, and peace negotiations over several years were inconclusive. Descendants of Edward III The marriage of Edward III and Philippa of Hainaut produced 13 children and 32 grandchildren, Edward, Richard, Marie, Philippa, Philippa through Philippa, the House of York, by cognatic kinship, asserted that its claim to the throne was superior to the House of Lancaster's. Philippa's granddaughter and heir Anne Mortimer married Richard of Connorsburg, 3rd Earl of Cambridge, the Duke of York's heir. The Earls of Northumberland and Clifford, significant supporters of the Lancasters during the Wars of the Roses, were descendants of Philippa through her other daughter, Elizabeth Mortimer. Philippa married John I of Portugal. John died as an infant. Elizabeth married John Hastings, 3rd Earl of Pembroke, John Holland, 1st Duke of Exeter, and John Cornwall, 1st Baron Fanhope, respectively. Edward of Lancaster. John of Lancaster died as an infant. Henry. Isabella of Lancaster died as a child. After Blanche's death in 1369, John married Constance of Castile trying unsuccessfully to obtain the throne of Castile.
The marriage produced two children. Catherine of Lancaster married Henry III of Castile, with whom she was a great-grandmother of Catherine of Aragon, first wife of Henry VIII of England. John Constance died in 1394, after which John married Catherine Swinford on 13 January 1396. Their four children were born before they married. The Pope legitimized them in 1396, as did Richard II by charter, on the condition that their children could not ascend the throne, John grandfather of Margaret Beaufort Henry VII's mother, Henry Thomas Joan Jones' son Richard Neville, 5th Earl of Salisbury, and her grandson Richard Neville, 16th Earl of Warwick, were leading supporters of the House of York. Edward killed at the Battle of Agincourt. Constance, Richard Edward's long reign had forged a new national identity reinforced by Middle English beginning to establish itself as the spoken and written language of government. As a result, he is considered by many historians in cultural respects the first English post-conquest ruler. Demise of the Main Line The Black Prince's ten-year-old son succeeded as Richard II of England on the death of his grandfather nominally exercising all the powers of kingship supported by various councils. His government levied poll taxes to finance military campaigns and combined with the poor state of the economy resulted in the Peasants' Revolt in 1381 followed by brutal reprisals against the rebels. The king's uncle Thomas of Woodstock, 1st Duke of Gloucester Richard Fitzalan 11th Earl of Arundel and Thomas de Beecham, 12th Earl of Warwick became known as the Lord's Appellant when they sought to impeach five of the king's favourites and restrain what was increasingly seen as tyrannical and capricious rule. Later they were joined by Henri Bolingbroke, the son and heir of John of Gaunt, and Thomas de Mowbray, first Duke of Norfolk. Initially, they were successful in establishing a commission to govern England for one year, but they were forced to rebel against Richard defeating an army under Robert de Vere. Earl of Oxford at the skirmish of Radcart Bridge. Richard was reduced to a figurehead, with little power, as a result of the merciless Parliament of Vere and Michael de la Pole. First Earl of Suffolk who had fled abroad were sentenced to death in their absence. Alexander Neville Archbishop of York had all his possessions confiscated. Several of Richard's council were executed. On John of Gaunt's return from Spain Richard was able to re-establish his power having Gloucester murdered in captivity in Calais. Warwick was stripped of his title. Bolingbroke and Mowbray were exiled. When John of Gaunt died in 1399 Richard disinherited John's son Henry, who invaded England in response with a small force that quickly grew in numbers. Meeting little resistance Henry deposed Richard to have himself crowned Henry IV of England. Richard died in captivity early the next year probably murdered bringing an end to the main Plantagenet line. None of Henry's heirs were free from challenge on the grounds of not being the true heir of Richard II and that the Lancastrian dynasty had gained the throne by an act of usurpation. House of Lancaster Henry married his Plantagenet cousin Mary de Bouin who was paternally descended from Edward I and maternally from Edmund Crouchback. They had seven children. Henry also had one son. Edward Henry went to convoluted legal means to justify his succession. Many Lancastrians asserted that his mother had had legitimate rights through her descent from Edmund Crouchback who it was claimed was the elder son of Henry III of England set aside due to deformity, as the great-grandson of Lionel of Antwerp first Duke of Clarence Edmund Mortimer. Earl of March was the heir presumptive to Richard II, and Henry used multiple rationally stressing his Plantagenet descent divine grace powerful friends and Richard's misgovernment. In fact Mortimer never showed interest in the throne. The later marriage of his sister Anne to Richard of Connorsburg, 
third Earl of Cambridge consolidated this claim to the throne, with that of the more junior House of York. Henry planned to resume war with France, but was plagued with financial problems, declining health and frequent rebellions. He defeated a Scottish invasion, a serious rebellion by Henri Percy, first Earl of Northumberland in the North and Owain Glyndower's rebellion in Wales. Many saw it as a punishment from God when Henry was later struck down with unknown but chronic illnesses. Henry IV died in 1413. His son and successor Henry V of England, aware that Charles VI of France's mental illness had caused instability in France, invaded to assert the Plantagenet claims and won a near total victory over the French at the Battle of Agincourt. In subsequent years Henry recaptured much of Normandy and secured marriage to Catherine of Valois. The resulting Treaty of Troyes stated that Henry's heirs would inherit the throne of France. But conflict continued with the Dauphin. When Henry died in 1422, his nine-month-old son succeeded him as Henry VI of England. During the minority of Henry VI the war caused political division among his Plantagenet uncles. Bedford Humphrey of Lancaster first Duke of Gloucester and Cardinal Beaufort. Humphrey's wife was accused of treasonable necromancy after two astrologers in her employ unwisely, if honestly predicted a serious illness would endanger Henry VI's life, and Humphrey was later arrested and died in prison. Depopulation stemming from the Black Death led to increased wages, static food costs, and a resulting improvement in the standard of living for the peasantry. However, under Henry Mus government and harvest failures depressed the English economy to a pitiful state known as the Great Slump. The economy was in ruins by 1450, a consequence of the loss of France piracy and the Channel and poor trading relations. With the Hanseatic League, the economic slowdown began in the 1430s in the north of the country, spreading south in the 1440s with the economy not recovering until the 1480s. It was also driven by multiple harvest failures in the 1430s and disease amongst livestock, which drove up the price of food and damaged the wider economy. Certain groups were particularly badly affected, cloth exports fell by 35% in just four years at the end of the 1440s collapsing by up to 90% in some parts of the southwest. The Crown's debts reached £372,000. Henry's deficit was £20,000 per annum and tax revenues were half those of his father. House of York Edward III made his fourth son Edmund I Duke of York in 1362. Edmund was married to Isabella, a daughter of King Peter of Castile and Maria de Padilla, and the sister of Constance of Castile who was the second wife of Edmund's brother John of Gaunt. Both of Edmund's sons were killed in 1415. Richard became involved in the Southampton plot a conspiracy to depose Henry V in favor of Richard's brother-in-law Edmund Mortimer. When Mortimer revealed the plot to the king Richard was executed for treason. Richard's childless older brother Edward was killed at the Battle of Agincourt later the same year. Constance of York was Edmund's only daughter and was an ancestor of Queen Anne Neville. The increasingly interwoven Plantagenet relationships were demonstrated by Edmund's second marriage, to Joan Holland. Her sister Eleanor Holland was mother to Richard's wife Anne Mortimer. Margaret Holland, another of Joan's sisters, married John of Gaunt's son. She later married Thomas of Lancaster, John of Gaunt's grandson by King Henry IV. A third sister, Eleanor Holland, was mother-in-law to Richard Neville, fifth Earl of Salisbury, John's grandson, by his daughter Joan Beaufort, Countess of Westmoreland. These sisters were all granddaughters of Joan of Kent, the mother of Richard II, and therefore Plantagenet descendants of Edward I. Edmund's son Richard was married 
to Anne Mortimer, the daughter of Roger Mortimer, 4th Earl of March, and Eleanor Holland, and great granddaughter of Edward III, second surviving son Lionel. Anne died giving birth to their only son in September 1411. Richard's execution four years later left two orphans, Isabel, who married into the Boucher family and a son who was also called Richard. Although his earldom was forfeited Richard was not attainted, and the four-year-old orphan Richard was his heir. Within months of his father's death, Richard's childless uncle Edward Duke of York was killed at Agincourt. Richard was allowed to inherit the title of Duke of York in 1426. In 1432 he acquired the earldoms of March and Ulster on the death of his maternal uncle Edmund Mortimer Earl of March, who had died campaigning with Henry V in France and the earldom of Cambridge which had belonged to his father, being descended from Edward III in both the maternal and the paternal line gave Richard a significant claim to the throne if the Lancastrian line should fail and, by cognatic primogeniture arguably a superior claim. He emphasized the point by being the first to assume the Plantagenet surname in 1448. Having inherited the March and Ulster titles, he became the wealthiest and most powerful noble in England second only to the king himself. Richard married Cecily Neville, a granddaughter of John of Gaunt, and had 13 or possibly 15 children. When Henry VI had a mental breakdown, Richard was named regent. But the birth of a male heir resolved the question of succession. When Henry's sanity returned, the court party reasserted its authority, but Richard of York and the Nevilles defeated them at a skirmish called the First Battle of St. Albans. The ruling class was deeply shocked, and reconciliation was attempted. York and the Nevilles fled abroad but the Nevilles returned to win the Battle of Northampton where they captured Henry. When Richard of York joined them he surprised Parliament by claiming the throne and forcing through the Act of Accord which stated that Henry would remain as king for his lifetime but would be succeeded by York. Margaret found this disregard for her son's claims unacceptable and so the conflict continued. York was killed at the Battle of Wakefield and his head set on display at Micklegate Bar along with those of Edmund Earl of Rutland and Richard Neville Earl of Salisbury who had been captured and beheaded. The Scottish Queen Mary of Gelders provided Margaret with support, but London welcomed York's son Edward Earl of March and Parliament confirmed that Edwards should be made king. He was crowned after consolidating his position with victory at the Battle of Toton. Edwards' preferment of the former Lancastrian supporting Woodville family following his marriage to Elizabeth Woodville led Warwick and Clarence to help Margaret depose Edward and return Henry to the throne. Edward and Richard Duke of Gloucester fled but on the return Clarence switched sides at the Battle of Barnet leading to the death of the Neville brothers. The subsequent Battle of Tewkesbury brought the demise of the last of the male line of the Beauforts. The battlefield execution of Edward of Westminster Prince of Wales, and the later probable murder of Henry VI extinguished the House of Lancaster. By the mid-1470s, the victorious House of York looked safely established with seven living male princes, Edward IV, and his two sons, his brother George and George's son, his brother Richard and Richard's son, Edward, and Elizabeth Woodville themselves had ten children, seven of whom survived him. Dynastic infighting and misfortune quickly brought about the demise of the House of York. George Plantagenet, first Duke of Clarence, plotted against his brother and was executed. Following Edward's premature death in 1483, his brother Richard had Parliament declare Edward's two sons illegitimate on the pretext of an alleged prior pre-contract to Lady Eleanor Talbot leaving Edward's marriage invalid. Richard seized the throne and the princes in the tower were never seen again.
Richard's son predeceased him, and Richard was killed in 1485 after an invasion of foreign mercenaries led by Henry Tudor, who claimed the throne through his mother Margaret Beaufort. Tudor assumed the throne as Henry VII, founding the Tudor dynasty and bringing the Plantagenet line of kings to an end. Tudor when Henry Tudor seized the throne there were 18 Plantagenet descendants who might today be thought to have a stronger hereditary claim and by 1510 this number had been increased further by the birth of 16 Yorkist children. Henry mitigated this situation with his marriage to Elizabeth of York. She was the eldest daughter of Edward IV, and all their children were his cognatic heirs. Indeed, Polydor Virgil noted Henry VIII's pronounced resemblance to his grandfather Edward. For just as Edward was the most warmly thought of by the English people amongst all English kings, so this successor of his Henry was very like him in general appearance in greatness of mind and generosity and for that reason was the most acclaimed and approved of all. This did not deter Margaret of York, Duchess of Burgundy, Edward's sister, and Elizabeth's aunt and members of the de la Pole family, children of Edward's sister, and John de la Pole, second Duke of Suffolk, from frequent attempts to destabilize Henry's regime. Henry imprisoned Margaret's nephew, Edward, Earl of Warwick, the son of her brother George, in the Tower of London, but in 1487 Margaret financed a rebellion led by Lambert Simnel pretending to be Edward. John de la Pole, first Earl of Lincoln, joined the revolt, probably anticipating that it would further his own ambitions to the throne. But he was killed in the suppression of the uprising at the Battle of Stokefield in 1487. Warwick was implicated by two further failed invasions supported by Margaret using Perkin Warbeck pretending to be Edward IV's son Richard of Shrewsbury, and Warbeck's later planned escape for them both. Warwick was executed in 1499. Edward's execution may simply have been a precondition for the marriage of Arthur Prince of Wales to Catherine of Aragon in 1501. De La Pole John de la Pole's attainder meant that his brother Edmund inherited their father's titles, but much of the wealth of the Duchy of Suffolk was forfeit. Edmund did not possess sufficient finances to maintain his status as a duke, so as a compromise he accepted the title of Earl of Suffolk. Financial difficulties led to frequent legal conflicts and Edmund's indictment for murder in 1501. He fled with his brother Richard while their remaining brother William was imprisoned in the tower where he would remain until his death 37 years later as part of a general. Suppression of Edmund's associates Philip the Fair had been holding Edmund, and in 1506 he returned him to Henry. Edmund was imprisoned in the tower. In 1513, he was executed after Richard de la Pole, whom Louis XII of France had recognized as King of England the previous year, claimed the kingship in his own right. Richard, known as the White Rose, plotted an invasion of England for years but was killed in 1525 at the Battle of Pavia while fighting as the captain of the French Landsknechts during Francois I of France's invasion of Italy. Pole Warwick's sister and therefore Edward IV's niece Margaret Pole, Countess of Salisbury, was executed by Henry VIII in 1541. By then the cause was more religious and political rather than dynastic. The attainder of her father Clarence was a legal bar to any claims to the throne by his children. Additionally her marriage arranged by Henri VII to Sir Richard Pole, his half-cousin and trusted supporter was not auspicious. Nevertheless it did allow the couple to be closely involved in court affairs. Margaret's fortunes improved under Henry VIII, and in February 1512 she was restored to the earldom of Salisbury and all the Warwick's lands. This made her the first and apart from Anne Boleyn the only woman in 16th-century England 
to hold a peerage title in her own right. Her daughter Ursula married the son of Edward Stafford, 3rd Duke of Buckingham. Buckingham's fall after arguments with the king over property, and Margaret's open support for Catherine of Aragon and Princess Mary began the Poles' estrangement from the king. Hope of reconciliation was dashed by de Unitate. The letter that Margaret's son Reginald Pole wrote to Henry VIII, in which Reginald declared his opposition to the royal supremacy. In 1538 evidence came to light that Pole family members in England had been in communication with Reginald. Margaret's sons Geoffrey and Henry were arrested for treason along with several friends and associates including Henry's wife and brother in Lord Wood Neville. Among those arrested was the King's cousin Henry Courtney, 1st Marquess of Exeter, his wife, and 11 year old son. Courtney's wife was released two years later, but their son spent 15 years in the Tower until Queen Mary released him. Except for the surviving Geoffrey Pole, all the others implicated were beheaded. Margaret was attainted. The possibility of an invasion involving Reginald via her south coast estates and her embittered relationship with Henry VIII precluded any chance of pardon. However, the decision to execute her seems a spontaneous rather than a premeditated act. According to the calendar of state papers her execution was botched at the hands of a wretched and blundering youth who literally hacked her head and shoulders to pieces in the most pitiful manner. In 1886 she was beatified by Pope Leo XIII on the grounds she had laid down her life for the Holy See and for the truth of the Orthodox faith. Stafford Edward Stafford, Duke of Buckingham, combined multiple lines of Plantagenet descent, from Edward III by his son Thomas of Woodstock, from Edward III via two of his Beaufort grandchildren and from Edward I from Joan of Kent and the Holland family. His father failed in his rebellion against Richard III in 1483, but was restored to his inheritance on the reversal of his father's attainder late in 1485. His mother married Henry VII's uncle Jasper Tudor and his wardship was entrusted to the king's mother Lady Margaret Beaufort. In 1502 during Henry VII's illness there was debate as to whether Buckingham or Edmund de la Pole should act as regent for Henry VIII. There is no evidence of continuous hostility between Buckingham and Henry VIII, but there is little doubt of the Duke's dislike of Thomas Wolsey whom he believed to be plotting to ruin the old nobility. Therefore Henry VIII instructed Wolsey to watch Buckingham, his brother Henry Stafford, 1st Earl of Wiltshire and three other peers. Neither Henry VIII nor his father planned to destroy Buckingham because of his lineage. And Henry VIII even allowed Buckingham's son and heir Henry Stafford, 1st Baron Stafford, to marry Ursula Pole, giving the Staffords a further line of royal blood descent. Buckingham himself was arrested in April 1521, he was found guilty on 16 May, and executed the next day. Evidence was provided that the Duke had been listening to prophecies that he would be king and that the Tudor family lay under God's curse for the execution of Warwick. This was said to explain Henry VIII's failure to produce a male heir. Much of this evidence consisted of ill-judged comments, speculation and bad temper, but it underlined the threat presented by Buckingham's descent. Tudor succession as late as 1600 with the Tudor succession in doubt. Older Plantagenet lines remained as possible claimants to a disputed throne and religious and dynastic factors gave rise to complications. Thomas Wilson wrote in his report The State of England Anno Domini 1600 that there were 12 competitors for the succession. At the time of writing, Wilson had been working on intelligence matters for Lord Buckhurst and Sir Robert Cecil. The alleged competitors included five descendants of Henry VII and Elizabeth, 
including the eventual successor James I of England but also seven from older Plantagenet lines, Ranulf Crewe, Chief Justice of the King's Bench, argued that by 1626 the House of Plantagenet could not be considered to remain in existence in a speech. During the Oxford Peerage case which was to rule on who should inherit the earldom of Oxford, it was referred by Charles I of England to the House of Lords who called for judicial assistance. Crewe said, I have laboured to make a covenant with myself. That affection may not press upon judgment. For I suppose there is no man that hath any apprehension of gentry and nobleness. But his affection stands to the continuance of a house so illustrious, and would take hold of a twig or twine thread to support it. And yet time hath his revolutions. There must be a period and an end to all temporal things, finis rerum, an end of names and dignities. And whatsoever is Turin, and why not of De Vere? For, where is Buen? Where is Mowbray? Where is Mortimer? Nay, which is more and most of all? Where is Plantagenet? They are entombed in the urns, and sepulchres of mortality. Yet let the name of De Vere stand so long as it pleaseth God. Brought to you by wikivd.com Would you like to know more?